here's picks and bans for game number two, Anarchy versus Genera. There's a vein ban. I only hope that this means there's no room for a bard ban. That's right. Well, they don't have to ban Callista this time, so... Yep. Oh, good point. I wish you wouldn't have made that good point. Oh, no. Oh. We're never going to get to see it. By the time they let Sweet play Bard, it's uh, it's going to be nerfed. Yep, pretty much. So we'll never get to see Sweet play Bard. <laughs> Thanks, Obama. <laughs> Will be one of the great mysteries of the universe. Yep. It's like Schrodinger's bard, you know? If you, no one sees him play it, is he the best bard ever or the worst bard ever? At least both at the same time, obviously. That's true. So Callista's led through. Now, last week, KT dealt with this by picking Urgot and Braum in the bottom lane. So basically, Callista was locked down for a lot of that game. And here we go. Styling begins. What do you think about Evelyn right now? I agree with, uh, I think Evelyn's okay, especially against teams that may not have the highest level of coordination, like Anarchy, you can play with Vision, it forces teams to play a different way. In my mind, Evelyn is pretty much always viable because of how much she changes the way the game is played from the enemy team. That's true. Uh, that invisibility by itself creates a massive disturbance in the game, and Will they go for the Rek'Sai here? Has been one of Chaser's go-to picks and would allow him to put down some early pressure. Well, I think against the Kalitsi, you just go tanky either way. And a Cho'Gath for GBM in the mid lane would certainly apply, but yeah, the Sejuani, a strong pickup as well. Does leave Gragas open for Lyra, and he has... No, no, it's banned. Yeah, uh, I agree with banning Gragas because Lyra was impressive in terms of his Gragas mechanics, but he chose just to farm mostly on yeah. Rek'Sai in the last game, not even using her early game power whatsoever which is a little odd because Lyra has been very active in terms of ganking so well, far from, from what we've seen. I don't think LeBlanc would be a great pick here. I mean, it is open for GBM to take, obviously, if you don't take it away, but then Jenner just continues to pick tanky champions, and then you have both carries with not a lot to do. Yeah, and Mickey hasn't really delivered on LeBlanc in the same way, but this is a team composition that Anarchy can use to really snowball the early game. Obviously, the True. Callista Thresh lane is very dangerous. Uh, really powerful kill potential in that lane. So Jyn Air probably just going to react. Honestly, if I know Jyn Air, they're, they're probably going to play Urgot or Ezreal here. Yep. And just play really, really safely to avoid that kill pressure. And Rumble Gnar. Lulu would not be a bad pickup right here. You have some mid game power, and you've got the Lulu just to prevent any all ins from Mickey. Hmm. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. There we go, locked in. Lulu and Rumble. So the final two picks over to Anarchy, and we'll see what they have as far as their top and mid goes, or uh, top and jungle goes, rather. Yeah, Rek'Sai Nar. Pretty standard. The, I, I don't know if I'm Anarchy, if I go ahead and take the Gnar right here. There's the Evelyn locked in mm. for Lyra. This is going to be the third time he's actually played that champion so far. So they've been relying on it just to be surprising. And uh, I think that's really a great play right here. Anarchy kind of all in, all inning on the laning phase. If they get fed out of laning phase, they'll be able to carry this game very effectively with LeBlanc and Callista. And, the ganks from Evelyn, just due to the surprise factor, will help that pretty significantly. But if they don't get that advantage, Evelyn just simply isn't as good of a late game jungler as Sejuani in terms of the setup for team fights. Of course, that range CC really helping out with Sejuani and having some percent damage as well, and just a lot more crowd control effects. So, yep. Falling behind could be dangerous, and it's going to be difficult to gank. Lulu in the mid lane, so they have to look to gank bottom or top, and if Sweet and Pilot play far back with that Alistair under the turret, I mean, Alistair Urgot, one of the hardest lanes of the game to dive. Really, really challenging. Yeah, you're going to get knocked away, you're just going to do less damage against them, it's... You'll get just massively CC'd under the tower, you'll get pulled under the tower further. Yep. It's very dangerous. Yep. So it's pretty solid team composition. It's a great answer to Callista, who does need to 
snowball off the laning phase most of the time to actually remain relevant late. And we are going to have, it's like somebody needs to fix something in the client, so we're gonna go through Champ Select one more time, GBM, maybe a swap, champion swap error right there, but we'll get right back into it. Yep, a couple of Genera players leaving the lobby, so uh, we'll just have to remake that. And then we'll get ready for game number two. And Jenner, I mean, yeah, they see the Callista, they see the LeBlanc, and they're like, all right, well, we're just going to go with a composition that's extremely hard to kill. And I don't really see any reason why this wouldn't work out for them unless they start kind of making some pretty serious mis mistakes. And there are some areas of vulnerability early, especially Pilot and Sweet. If they do get Dove pre-6, that could be some problems. But we could also just see them lane swap here and not even take that risk up until... Oh, yeah. Burgot has that ultimate to help deal with any possible tower dives. Also in the top side, Trace has to be careful for getting ganked because he can get killed pretty easily by Nar and Evelyn together. And with Urgot not being the most mobile champion, any pushes up the lane will have to be considered. And Chaser here going for Sejuani instead of Rek'Sai. I don't really like that pick in this composition because the Tremor Sense would be highly useful against Evelyn. True. And you point. would have much more of an early game kill pressure. So it's going to be a lot of farming for Jin Air early on if they have their way. And Anarchy looking to make the plays. They're going to have to take some risks. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose uh, the Sejuani ult does let you get range for position reverse or things like that. We'll see if Jin Air can get the clean 2-0 or if Anarchy will bring it back and send us a game three. The game will be loading fairly soon. They're still getting to the lobby now, but either way, the action will commence shortly. GBM, no Yasuo, but a second game on that Lulu. We played really well in game one. Yeah, and his Lulu's been strong all year, so no surprise to see him coming back to that. It's always something you can use as a utility pick to boost up your AD carry. Nice pick. That's right. So Anarchy, another chance to prove their worth. And can they do it in the early game? Seems like a pretty solid strategy, but we'll see if they can pull it off. Doesn't look like the players are too worried about it either way, though. It's time to get in the game, guys. And see if this is the end of our first best of three or not. It's showtime. Here we go. That was a very weak cheer, Janeer fans. Hey, Anarchy had a bigger cheer. <laughs> it did. Janeer fans just like sounded half hearted. Fighting. Yeah. What's up with that, Janeer fans? You got a cheer for Janeer. Yeah, no kidding. Lyra. Tosses in that ward. Looks like an early invade from Janeer just to get some D ports going down. They want to know where this Evelyn starts, I suppose. Yeah, just checking right now to see what the lane swap situation might be as well. I yep. suspect that they are going to want to get that lane swap just like they did in the last game. And so Pilot and Sweet going to wrap around through the tri brush and right back out of the jungle as a unit. Oh. They know they're showing on that ward right there. They did see it dropped earlier. Yeah. So just Playing a little bit more reserve. Nar is going to show right by the blue buff, and that's where the pings are going to go down. We'll see if the mind games are coming in. Ixu heading back into the fog of war currently. Yeah, Jinair was able to take three out of the four buffs at the beginning of the last game as well, too. So they've been handling Anarchy in the very early minutes pretty well. Yeah, Nar repeatedly showing on this ward, so. Pilot and Sweet will head up to the top side as soon as they realize what's going on. Now Nar walking into the jungle just to get the double jungle going on as Urgot is left to freeze the lane. And Alistair maybe checking out the jungle to see if any shenanigans are going on. He's actually checking wolves right there to make sure that Nar isn't starting on that camp. And Sweet, is he going to try and take these little golems or just harass? It's like. No like early neither. creeping. Sometimes you do see the supports try and take the little golems just to delay the leveling of the enemy jungler, which can be a very effective tactic. Yeah. So Pilot has selected giant enemy crab got, therefore they will win the game. That's just how it is. I don't make the rules. 
you just read them? That's right. I just react <laughs> to what I see in front of me. We ate some delicious king crab the other day, didn't we? Yes, we did. I don't think Urgot would be a delicious crab, though. I would not want to try that. If I, I, if I did, though, it'd definitely have to be boiled. I mean, he's pretty much the same level of grossness as all crabs are, really. Well, yeah. I mean, you. your argument is that they're <laughs> giant ocean spiders. Except they feed on carrion and they're scavengers. They're pretty disgusting animals, wow. actually. Mickey taking a lot of damage early on. They are, but they taste delicious. They do taste delicious, but they are gross. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wonder what, you, you ever wonder what it was like to be like an early human and you, you have these like animals that you find and you're just like, I'm going to eat it. I'm just <laughs> going to eat it and see what happens. <laughs> Maybe I'll die. It's like uh, it's a giant giant ocean spider. wonder how it tastes. <laughs> better put it in my mouth. I better. <laughs> it's really hard to get into, which means it must be delicious. See, that's I think that's what led to people eating crabs, that it was hard to get into. Anarchy taking a very early dragon. At three minutes. Yeah, Trace actually TPing down there. He will see what's going on. Pops a ward into the dragon brush. People low, but there frankly aren't enough people there from Janair to actually deal any damage right now. A little bit of a delayed reaction from Chaser and Sweet in that situation. Sweet could have moved down just a little bit sooner and maybe disrupted that, but Anarchy will get out with that early dragon, no problem. Still a big freeze going in at the top side. Trace shouldn't have an issue breaking this freeze under the turret, just trying to stay back, uses Flame Spitter and Harpoons from afar while Sweet zones out, makes sure that he's gonna be okay with some of those deep wards. That's still farming just fine early on. Man, the people that ate like the first mushrooms, those are the ones that were really brave because it's like, <laughs> all right, we found this thing in the forest. It's either gonna taste amazing or it's going to kill you, or it's going to make you really high. It's going to be like one of those, <laughs> we don't know which one it's going to be, but we're just going to find out. <laughs> Let's do it. Good times. That's right. Thanks to thanks to them. Maybe all three I, if you're lucky. That's right. I appreciate their efforts. Because I love mushrooms. Eating them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't dig my way out of that one, can I now? Oh, well. Damage has been done. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Mistakes were made. <laughs> oh well. I'll just own it as best I can. <laughs> Lyra lurking about in the lower jungle. Doesn't look like he's going to find a ton of opportunities, though. Every lane looking pretty ungankable. Even this bot lane. I mean, it's, it's Rumble Alistar. We do see Snowflower roaming down, too. So maybe out of the three of them, they can make something happen. He goes through a pink ward, though. Trace getting slowed for the moment. Yeah. Yeah, nice Good pink ward. Nice pink ward just lets you know if that Evelyn is coming down and trying to make a play while you're you're pushing up right there. Besides, they broke the freeze anyway. The wave looks like it will be reversing, so Rumble can have some more opportunities. Tons of pink wards down right now. Mm -hmm. In favor of oh, Jinair. There's a play. Snowflower, wow, taking a lot of damage here. Song Yun trying to equalize to make a difference here. Snowflower getting low though. We'll see if the ignite. Finishes him off, doesn't look like it will. Meanwhile, here comes Ixu teleporting down. First blood for Songyun as he flashes ahead for that one. Ixu not quite done yet putting on the damage, but uh, he may take quite a bit for it. Oh, man. Lucky Lyra was there. Otherwise, that would have been a dead gnar. Yeah, and just chasing him off. Very close to taking out Snowflower, but since Trace didn't have the TP, you have to respect that TP in the top side. But yeah. will this get Ixu behind in terms of CS? Because how much is he going to lose on this top lane turret? If we can take a look at the top side right now, Pilot is actually just pushing, pushing, pushing this lane into the tower. So some CS is going to be denied. We'll see if that first blood onto Sangyun is worth it. He, remember that Anarchy really needs to get a lead out of this laning phase to be relevant in the late game. Yeah, getting that first blood onto Callista is pretty great. And I mean, Nixu did get an assist as well, so it's okay, but losing quite a bit of, he lost nearly that entire, entire wave looking at the minimap. Lyra. Yeah. Urgot's coming back down now, so they're trying to switch this into the 2 oh, LeBlanc is coming. They're going to try to cut off Trace, it looks like. Now, dropped Pink Ward. Uh, got back in, yep. Very good timing. They are going to lose it immediately, but no one actually going to die as a result of that. And now Rumble will go topside just to catch this wave. We did see that he prepped it, froze it close to the turret so that Urgot could 
take this minion wave pretty easily on the bottom side. Pilot already with a nice CS advantage that's pretty much going to nullify that first blood gold almost. Yeah. Teleport from Trace to get himself back to lane to catch this wave. And so he'll be able to maintain a little bit of a CS edge out of this probably. Getting pretty close to level 6 at this point too. Only about half a level to go. But overall, aside from that first blood, things pretty, pretty stable across the board. But first dragon, first blood for Anarchy. It's a good start. I mean, this is what they needed to do. The only question is, you know, can they keep doing it? Yeah, and they, they, Jyn Air just keeps playing safe. They bought so many pink wards already this game. Another two pink wards coming in from Sweden Pilot just to keep themselves safe. They, they know that if they go late game on this one, Anarchy probably won't have the damage to take them down. Yeah, considering like how tanky they're going to be, especially with that wild growth from Lulu as well. Mm -hmm. Now, Jyn Air, they don't have a high damage composition either, but they're just going to win the, the war of attrition, basically. Yeah, they can kind of grind it out in the mid and late game once they start to get a bit tankier. One minute until Dragon is back again. And we see if anyone wants to try to make a move for it. Now, all those pink wards bought by Jyn Air as well, too, takes away from the items they could be getting. Well, at least they're not totally feeding mid and bot lane so far. I think that's the, that's the off, upside. Huh? You spend 100 gold, but you get that safety and make sure that Song Yun isn't going to get an overwhelming advantage True. with the help of Lyra. Good counter pink warding, though, as we see right now, a lot of wards in the river for Anarchy. And you're mentioning this before the broadcast, but that's something that Anarchy's been doing surprisingly well is warding. Yeah, yeah, they really For have. an amateur team. I mean, the basic mechanics, the basics are there for oh this my, team. It's this just going to be a ridiculous synergy. wombo combo. Yeah, uh, we will see. Sweet just waiting. There's a play. Pilot comes in position reverse around to Sagi, and immediately there's a nice pulverize right into Chaser. And that was an easy kill there. Snowflower tries to get away. Looks like he'll make it out, but they wanted the kill on Callista, and they got it. And they're going to be able to transition this immediately into the dragon as well, which yeah. is just a bonus for them. Should they go for it? Looks like we're just going to wait they could. a little bit as they push this wave up. They've got time to do the dragon for sure. LeBlanc yep. just going to use this opportunity to recall. They're going now. Considering go. they can't contest the dragon anyway. And so, equalizing the Dragons, another kill. Janair with the gold lead now. And they took a little tiny hit early on, but they came right back and grabbed the lead back again. Nice big CS lead for Pilot as well in this mid lane now. So things very, very much back on track for Janair. And you know now you're behind. Now is Anarchy, the team that kind of needs to be ahead. Now you're behind. It's not a lot, but any amount behind with this composition is pretty, pretty worrisome, I would imagine. Yeah, and especially now that the Dragons have been equalized because Anarchy can't play really hard on that objective to try and end the game earlier or force those preferable mid-game fights. It gives Janera some more breathing room just to get the items they need to close out the match right here. And Iksu wasn't able to turn that into a 4v4 if Anarchy wanted to contest it because his TP was just starting to come back up right now. Just came back up, in fact. A little bit too late, and it's a nice timing from Jyn Air. But Anarchy keeping things pretty even, at the very least. We'll see how if they can, again, transition to this. Mickey hasn't had as big of an effect on his LeBlanc as he has on some of his other champions in his pool. His Zed and Ari, in terms of roaming, proved a lot better yeah. than I his LeBlanc play. I mean, the other thing, too, is that the sample size is still just so low for this team that we really don't know a lot about these players yet. We're still kind of learning about all of their maximum capabilities, I suppose. Olira well, came down the bottom for a lane gank, but the lane was already pushed up, so not quite sure what was going to happen there. Maybe you think he was worried about uh, Chaser coming in to try something, perhaps? Yeah, possibly. Chaser's ult's back up right now, so they could make an identical play to the one we saw earlier. True. But not going to happen. Chaser's just sitting in Fountain right now. What's he waiting for? Uh, did he just get the enchant? I didn't see what he bought. Yeah, just, oh, Mickey gets the chains on the GBM. Backs away, though. And now, again, three more pink wards from Jyn Air. They are all over this. And usually we see teams try and deep ward with green wards to try and deal right. with it. Oh, oh, here wow. we go. GBM flashing in. He used that wild growth. 
got the knockup, but Mickey manages to make it out. Dodges so. the, oh, here we go, oh. all in on the bottom side. Nice play out of that, a knockup from the Fates call. There's the box going down, sweet, knocking Snowflower out of there. Sangyun still doing plenty of damage. Lyra not able to really contribute here a lot to that. Here Chaser. comes Chaser. He could get a nice ult. He's got the flash as well. The flash used for Sangyun already. Teleport by Trace, and there's a position reverser on to Lyra. Oh, gets uh, canceled though. Oh, but that's a nice equalizer coming down from Trace, and that's an easy double kill then for Pilot. And yeah. Mickey just not healthy enough to follow right here. GBM got the pressure in the mid lane. And it's a bit curious now. Anarchy tried to go for that gank, but it didn't look like they had accurate information about where Chaser was. Couldn't pull it off in time. I guess and so. because GBM had already chipped out Lyra on the bottom side, GBM was able to quickly move into the bottom side of the map and help out with that gank in the end before this LeBlanc could do much of anything at all. So three kills over to Pilot. Yeah, Anarchy responds with two turrets, though. So they're able to still stay close, gold-wise. It's not too bad. And Pilot this season so far, we saw his big KDA from the first match. It was only two games, but 31 KDA. And now he's really delivering here again tonight. Yeah. Remember, he has yet to die in either of the games this evening. That's true. And his positioning has been excellent. He's been showing a lot of new champions that I wouldn't have considered very pilot-esque previously. And the team is playing well around him. They're, uh, they're giving him so many kills and giving him this big opportunity to carry that we just haven't seen from pilot before. Do you feel like across the board we're seeing more of a focus back to uh, supporting the AD carry? Uh, I think it just depends on the team. Uh, Oh, McGee tries to make a plan to sweet here. He takes a lantern out, though. Doesn't want to fight that 1v3. But yeah, I feel like we're seeing a lot more compositions in general right now in Korea that are AD carry focused. Yeah, I think there's some kind of oddball priority picks for AD carry, like this Callista that we constantly see banned out. But a lot of teams don't have a, an AD carry that can reliably carry. and. We're seeing that with Samsung and uh, Najin and, and Jin Air in particular right now, two of these teams that have been running the Lulu mid and focusing more on the side lanes, at least tonight, for Jin Air and allowing GBM to play a more supportive role, whereas in the past, we would see him often on champions like Ari, like LeBlanc, like Zareth, and, and be more of a central carry himself. So Jin Air trying out a new identity, really. Uh, Which is good. Yeah. Uh, we needed to see some adaptation from them after how poorly the end of the spring season went. So it's good to see something new oh, from Jinair. Oh, man. Song Yoon built Hurricane first. I really don't like this build. Uh, yeah. And they're trying to bait Mickey in right now. Chaser is there. Oh, Mickey goes in on a GBM. There's a wild growth knocking him up. Mickey back in the brush there. Chaser chases with the ult. They had the ward there. Oh, he failed the flash. So they saw him, yeah. GBM trying to chase Mickey back into the brush again, over the wall, oh, right into the flame spitter. Talk about out of the frying pan and into the literal fire. Wow, look how well Jin Air actually corralled that right there. Chaser Seriously. failed his flash, but they had everything else on lockdown. Sangyu and Snowflower desperately trying to push right now. They get some damage under the tower, and at the very least, the hurricane is going to allow them to put pressure on the lane. But I just don't see a situation where Song Yoon is actually going to get in range of multiple targets in a team fight to make effective use of a yep. hurricane. Because if he walks up, he's going to get hit by Lulu or Sejuani CC or even a, a Urgot ult 100%. So he has to play more of a attack the front line role. And in that position, if you're not hopping through the fight, landing spears onto everybody, I just don't see the value in this item right now. Right. Well, Dragon taken by Janair pretty easily. Get that second one. They've got two out of the three outer turrets done. Same as Anarchy, I suppose. But the pressure's on now. Got to make something big happen. Pretty soon for Anarchy, it seems like. Yeah, Mickey going for an Abyssal Scepter right now, too. Not sure that's really an optimal item for him, trying to build into some resists up against this Lulu and this Rumble who are going to taper off in the late game. He needs to build for burst right now if he's trying to get back into this one and help get his team a lead because he has to get, he has to hit this power spike and then snowball off of that. Yeah. And Abyssal Scepter just not going to be 
the very best item for doing that. Meanwhile, GBM with a bit of a hodgepodge of a build right now, not even completing an item <laughs> yet, but moving into uh, Zeko. Zeko right. on Lulu very early. Well, he's got a choice. He can go Athene's or he can go Luden Zeko right now, whatever he decides to finish yeah. first. Or, you know, with enough gold, he could probably just finish both at once. It's interesting. certainly could. Well, some wards going down right now for Anarchy, but the dragon's already dead, so those bottom side wards aren't going to do them a lot of favors unless they want to dive this turret, which presents some pretty serious risk. But Song Yun at least keeping the pressure on this lane, that is something that he can do much more effectively with the hurricane, yeah. with the better wave clear. So as long as they're trying to prolong the laning phase, that's fine. But I, I feel that prolonging the laning phase isn't really what Anarchy wants to do. Here we go. Yeah, they may try to go in on this uh, chase right there, but Mickey's going to find him. First of all, nice pulverize from Sweet, taking a lot of damage in the process, though. Mickey, oh, there's a nice equalizer, oh. trapping a lot of Anarchy. Meanwhile, a good amount of damage comes in. That's a kill for Lyra, and Anarchy pushing Jin Air back a little bit. Death Sentence. Pilot stunned up against the wall. That's a kill now for Callista. Meanwhile, Trace going down, getting low. It's taken out. That's a double kill for Lyra in this fight. Sweet barely making it out. So Anarchy, oh. despite the setup for Jin Air, was able to come out on top that fight. Yeah, and Anarchy was all there first, which really helped because Jin Air right. was sort of filtering into that fight one by one. And even though Jin Air set up a great Sejuani Rumble ult combo, it just wasn't enough damage, and they didn't have the focus fire to take one person out right there. Look at that, Snowflower is going to miss his death sentence, but Pilot going to take an early flash right there. Sweet forced to burn his ultimate before he can really be effective, and that's a great old combo. But at the same time, Mickey comes in, gets a good distortion on multiple people, and then Song Yoon is able to hop forward and get a lot of Ren stacks down on multiple members. Iksu shows up with a big Gnar ultimate as well, but had Jin Air all been there at the same time, GBM was a little bit delayed, Trace was a little delayed because he had to TP to the, the, the minion wave behind his team in lane. Yeah. And just like that, Anarchy back in this game in a big way. That's they've what got they needed. A, yeah, absolutely. They've got a nice little 3,000 gold lead. Bloodthirst for finish now for Song Yoon. And this team just continues to show that they're a team that needs to be taken seriously 100% of the time. Yeah, they're very scrappy, and this is a, a healthy lead that they have right now. Yeah. If they can snowball it out, they're going to be in a in good position. But I think eventually their damage is going to taper off pretty significantly. Anarchy strikes me as like a better version of what Samsung was last season. Yeah. You know? They're, they share a lot of similar traits, but they're just kind of better about executing on everything. They've got that same aggression. They've got that same mechanical skill, but they're just able to put it together better. Well, it's not really that surprising either, considering that Samsung didn't have players with the level of experience that Anarchy has. Uh, no, yes, true. they're that's an true. amateur team, but they've lived in gaming houses before. They've performed in tournaments or in leagues before as well. Even though it has been more in a secondary capacity in China, they were still there. They were still performing. And mm -hmm. So they do have a bit of an advantage just in terms of being more veteran players than a lot of the members of Samsung were last season. Still wearing those just plain white dress shirts today as well, too. <laughs> they need some sort of uniform, you they know? Need, they need to be like punk rockers. We, we discussed this. Yeah, exactly. Time for everyone to get a mohawk. All of you, get a mohawk. All the teams need, like, themes, you know, to their attire. <laughs> needs to be like warriors or something like that, you know? You have the one team that's just all dressed like baseball players or something for some reason. It's like, you have like the hair rock guys. The you know? hair rock guys. Hair rock, you know? The yeah. hair metal. Hair metal? Yeah. Hair metal, hair rock, whatever. I love it. Just get some tease their hair 80s style. Get some bleach out. You could totally do it. <laughs> yeah. Some uh, <laughs> sick extensions. <laughs> Nobody misses the 80s. No. I'm trying to picture Trace with hair extensions now, you know, and like have it teased out. That'd yep. be great. Janair, you're really missing like some Van opportunities. Halen. Yeah. I bet Trace uh, kicks back and rocks out to the Van Halen once in a while, you know? Do you don't look like you agree with me. <laughs> Why? I, I just. I, I think uh, Trace is far, t far too serious for that. I just think he listens to. F 
K-pop probably. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably just has it on constantly on his second monitor like most uh, Korean pros do. Yeah, he just dances yeah. around the bubble pop when nobody's watching. Oh, geez, don't don't <laughs> mention the bubble pop. That we purged bubble pop from League of Legends long ago, Monte Cristo. You don't need to bring that back. I'm bringing it back. You don't need to bring that back. No. I'm bringing the bubble pack, bubble pop back to the fans, Doa. I'm doing fans, it for the fans. The fans only like bubble pop because they just don't know what else is out there. I mean, all K-pop is terrible. All right. I pretty much agree <laughs> with you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's like some of it has like a little bit of a catchy tune here and there, but overall I'm not I'm not a big fan. You know what? You know the, the K-pop Act 21? Yep. I really didn't like one of their songs once, and uh, I made like a mean tweet about it, and uh, I found out. I found out that there's a rabid fan base for this group, and they call themselves the Blackjacks because it's 21, right? And uh, I got like hundreds of really angry tweets <laughs> from fans of this. This it was really it was pretty funny. I found out. Did you find the? You don't the, mess with the Blackjacks, apparently. The Twitter. Or they'll entertain you. <laughs> pitchfork Mafia. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, when you're when you uh, insult K-pop, you're you're treading on some dangerous ground, Monte Cristo. <laughs> some of those fans are pretty intense. They'll get so mad that they say mean things to you on Twitter and then nothing else happens. That's right. Look out, man. Wow. They will type at you so hard. <laughs> <laughs> yep. The term is uh, keyboard warrior here in Korea. That's what they call people like that. The Korean term translates to keyboard warriors. Truly a, a noble calling, wouldn't you say, Doa? That's right. You know? I don't know. You know? I don't know. What would be... What would be like the way to make your keyboard look like the sickest weapon? <laughs> I don't. I'm sure somebody's already done this, though. I'm Probably. sure somebody has actually made a keyboard out of a weapon. You know, why don't we have movies where the hackers have like keyboards on like, like shoulder straps, like guitars were, you know, and they like just jump through the air and like program things really fast <laughs> while they're doing parkour or something? Why hasn't this happened yet? Seems I like mean, an opportunity. It does seem like that's the obvious next step to go in terms of Hollywood's ridiculous obsession with hacking and how it <laughs> operates in a fantasy, that's a fantasy right. reality. Yep. Be careful. You won't, don't want to become the hacked. So I, I was watching uh, Jurassic Park again the other day. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. One of my favorites. I yeah. just laugh so hard at the hacking. That yeah, that's right. That. It's a Unix system. I know this. <laughs> Yeah, that's a worst designed operating system. If you haven't seen Jurassic Park, at the end of it, there's a... The visual operating system where they have to go through yeah. the map of everything. It's, instead of just clicking folders or clicking around, no, you have to like fly through a three-dimensional space where you've got like your different programs or like cubes and stuff. It's like, wow, it's almost, it's almost as bad as the Windows 8 touch interface. <laughs> almost, almost. That's right. There's no flying yet in Windows. They haven't discovered the. That's right. That's going to be the hacker. next one. Yeah. It's, the only th it's the only time you can get through the special flight mode is if you're a hacker. Yep. That's right. They can <laughs> hack into it and get to flight mode. <laughs> Super secret flight mode. <laughs> there, we filled that pause quite nicely, didn't we? <laughs> I'm happy with how that one went. All right, back to the game. And, uh, and the lead for Anarchy. Ooh. Say, so grab a red buff and move towards. This top lane turret, maybe a little bit of pressure onto this tier two. Yeah, wave clear, not too great for Jin Air either, obviously with the Urgot, so. Yeah. A little bit vulnerable here, and Anarchy doing a good job of dialing up the pressure in this game and trying to take advantage of their lead. They've got some nice deep wards in that top side, unable to really do much at all to this tier two. Mm. Yeah, for now though. This is where Anarchy can start to kind of use that good warding to uh, push this lead. We've seen him do it in the past. They do have a lot of wards down. Dragging up in a minute 20. And if Anarchy can win a fight there and take the second dragon, then as Jynair, do you start to get a bit worried? Yeah, but if I'm Jynair, I don't even try and fight this dragon unless I have a really good reason to or a pretty preferential setup for the dragon around the pit because who cares if they get another dragon right now? It's not the end of the world. They're not going to be able to close this game out and you could just sit there and try and take a top tower, maybe get some gold back, start trying to even up that advantage and then fight later on once you've scaled into some serious tankiness. So, uh, That's right. Well, 
Rumble scared away by this LeBlanc for now. Yeah, he's dodging the chains right there. Mickey not really able to follow up considering he had already used his ultimate for their distortion. And <laughs> there's not really a lot of danger for Trace at the moment. And on you. He's gonna release some Sentinels. Setup already happening. Lots of wards down for Anarchy. Total vision control for them at the moment. Yeah, they really want this second dragon. And like you mentioned, I don't think it's worth it for Genera to try to contest this. It's not the biggest deal if they get it. Yeah, Nar just gonna go ahead and check the Baron, make sure they're not trading a Baron for a dragon or anything. And right. as I thought, Genera said, screw it. Let's go for the top lane tower instead. And I think that's the best possible strategic call at this point in time. There's, there's no real reason to go all in on that objective with their team composition. So that's a good read. And generic yeah. Jenner can clear out a little bit of vision right there. And yeah, they should be able to get this top lane turret finally as well, too. Yeah, but Anarchy's going to push mid, though. Yeah, they don't have any wave clear, though, there. So this could be a mistake. Yeah, if they trade a tier two, this is all of a sudden not worth it. They sent a lot of people in the top, and it was a late recall. So actually, wow. free tower from Anarchy. So that actually worked out really well for Anarchy. Yeah, without the teleport. On to Trace, there's nothing that Jynair can really do about it. They and as for one at least. who was going to split push that, having Trace up there, sure he's got the teleport and that's great. We're split pushing obviously, but he, they kind of need him because his ult is actually a pretty crucial component of wave clear with their composition. They only have Glitter Lance and Equalizer to clear waves. Yeah. Hmm. So Jin Air, all they really need to do is just sort of sit back and wait, huh? I mean, they should scale well, shouldn't they? Yeah, that's it. They're, just, they're going to get super tanky uh, to the point where this LeBlanc isn't going to have so much of a radical effect on the game anymore, particularly with Mickey's kind of wacky build this game. Yeah. Going for the fast Abyssal Scepter. Oh, almost got that Gromp. So close. Didn't. Chaser got the Gromp. Yeah, so, and Trace, too, he's going to be able to dodge a lot of LeBlanc damage if and when he actually picks up a Zonia's Hourglass here. So, Anarchy really has to find a way to continue to make picks. Otherwise, this Callista is going to get locked down because, remember, the, the key point for Urgot in these team fights is every time he levels up his ult because it substantially increases the range on that ability. So, once he hits the later levels in this game, he's going to be able to grab Sang Yun from pretty far away and put him right into a team fight where he will be collapsed on and killed nearly immediately, which is why he's got that early QSS. The thing we haven't mentioned too yet is that this is, you know, patch 5.9, and so that means Kalissa doesn't get any bonus hopping yep. distance on her backwards hops too, so makes it even a little bit harder to get away if you get stuck in that position, so Sang Yun's uh, positioning in team fights is going to need to be really good. Yeah, I think that was a nice change they made, although... Yeah, very reasonable. Hurricane did get a buff recently to get a little bit more damage on it as well, so that mm. empowered Callista, who's the primary champion who uses Hurricane, obviously. Yeah. Try and take away the blue buff. Not quite going to work right there. They'd love to give it over to GBM because they really need him with that wave clear ability. He's going to grab it. Sweet taking a lot of damage, though. He is going to be able to run out with the Whimsy. Uh, Ixu not finding an opportunity to use that Gnar ultimate to bring anyone back in, so it looks like Jenner will get that blue buff onto GBM and get out. But what's the response now? Looks like the response is to move over and secure that red buff as well, too. So, you know, Jenner playing smart, just saying, all right, well, the objectives that we can control right now are our buffs. So let's just hold on to those. Let's just kind of keep things safe and see where things go. Yeah, get some defensive wards. Make sure that you're not going to get picked off, that you have some idea about where these carries are moving on the map and play conservatively until you get a hell of a lot more tankiness. Pretty Trace much. going for the same build he did last time. Void Staff second, but he's gonna need that, he's gonna need that Zonia's Hourglass for the tankiness that it provides and the fact that he can zone out by flame spittering and then zoning to make sure that this Callista can't really engage these team fights particularly effectively. Well, Anarchy trying to bait Baron a little bit now. 
So you don't want Jin Air to have an easy time waiting for the late game. They want to fight. Yeah, they do, but they have to get more of a lead than they've got right now, and they're right. trying to make it happen through baiting this Baron, but... Well, and the Baron, this is a good bait, because obviously Callista has that insane Baron control for an AD carry, so there is a real threat of them doing Baron at this point in the game. Well, I think Anarchy knows that they have a window that they can kind of win this game in right now, and so they either have to take Baron or force a fight there to kind of keep that window open. It's not really working, though. They Sonya started autoing Baron, but then immediately backed off. They have to be decisive right now. Yeah, they have been so decisive, too, in a lot of their games. So it's a bit surprising to see them waffling a little bit. Yeah, just going back to Baron pit, then leaving again. Well, there's a green ward from Jyn Air in the back of the pit that's been there ah. for quite a long time that ha can't be seen by the pink ward they currently have. Might have been missed by a sweeping lens or something. Jyn Air sees this Baron happening, and it's not actually dying all that quickly. So yeah, Anarchy's going to need to back off. Well, it doesn't, Baron doesn't go down quickly with Callista for the first part of Baron. It's that big multi-thousand damage spike via Rend at the end that causes right. it to go down in a heartbeat. So the, it just finishes off quite quickly, and there is Mickey throwing out a chain. Not really going to do all that much to Sweet right now. Aegis has been completed for Chaser. That's a pretty big pickup against the burst coming in from LeBlanc to help out the rest of the team. Oh, Mickey. I mean, everyone's so tanky. Yeah, who's... On who, who is... The only person that, that Mickey's going to be able to burst on LeBlanc in the late game is Rumble, and that's if Rumble just doesn't get his Zonias in this game. But other than that, everyone else is perfectly capable of surviving a LeBlanc combo. Yeah, we've seen some of these. Well, mo I feel like we've seen most of the LeBlanc picks these days. Oh, oh we never got mind. All right, well, uh, forget Alistair everything we die? just say. He didn't get to use his ult. He didn't get to do anything. No. Wow, we're going to have to see a replay of that. Meanwhile, Dragon taken. That's the third one now for uh, Anarchy. So things still going OK. But it, it seems like these LeBlanc picks, like you said, are kind of running into a bit of a brick wall when it comes to tanky compositions. Maybe I, Mickey will prove us wrong this time, but in general, it hasn't worked out for a lot of teams. I'm really surprised that Mickey was able to pull that off, especially yeah. without using Ignite. That's the big one. They're going to start the Baron here before they clear out the ward, so this oh is going to be pretty telegraphed. More wards coming in from Jyn Air. Anarchy knows they're going for it, though. Pilot throwing some Dangerous. poison in there. Anarchy has to back away. Oh, the hook misses. And we'll see if Jyn Air wants to try something. They've got the Alta Bond to chase her, but again, no sweet. He's trying to join the fight right now, so it would be a 4v5. Pilot coming in, trying to get that position reverser, gets grabbed, gets with the box. There's a wild growth to keep him alive. Chaser comes in, doesn't use that ult yet. He's being very patient with it. Sweet joining the fight now. Chaser with the kill, and here we go. A beautiful equalizer comes in for Trace. Nar ultimate does a lot of work on Jyn Air, though, but it's not enough. And Anarchy pushed away. Iksu flashing over the wall. Gonna die anyway after those knockups. Another kill for Chaser. Mickey waiting for an opportunity. Did he find one? Nope. Just not enough damage. Mickey has no mana there either. They took a risk on that Baron. Yep. Tried to go all in it, didn't bait, and took some damage before they wow, turned. Oh, GBM. <laughs> and then, of course, blood. Trace. His equalizers have been so good. Yeah. Not only tonight, but ever since this season began, his two games last week as well. Picking up the Rumble in one of those, really doing a lot of work on it. And now Jyn is going to take that Baron, going to even up in terms of gold and have all that pressure. Let's take a look at this one again. I mean, Pilot gets hooked right there, so they think it's a good opportunity to go in, but Wild Growth and Flash gets him out of that circumstance pretty quickly. And look at that four-man ultimate, and then another ultimate right there. And if you notice, Song Yun had to blow his QSS on the Sejuani ultimate, so then Pilot just grabbed him immediately, swapped yeah. him back in, and he was dead. Yeah, I mean, the, really the story of that fight, I feel like, was the patience of Chaser to wait for the perfect time for that ultimate. Well, because also, Pilot going, in, going, Pilot going in like that, baiting them into the fight, yeah. and then four-man Sejuani ultimate forces that QSS. Pilot just waiting as long as possible to use the position reverser, then recognizes that it's the prime time to use that ability after Trace lands that big equalizer, too. So just a beautifully, beautifully played team fight by Jin Air. Yeah. Well, Song has got his last Whisper, so doing a little bit more damage now. Getting some armor penetration, which is helpful against Jyn Air, of course, but Jyn Air, I think the window may have closed at this point, especially with yeah. that Baron buff. That Baron buff is really game-changing, and yep. Anarchy 
They, I think they misplayed that a little bit. You have to look for the pick right there. You can't commit that hard to Baron under those circumstances. You want to get that burst damage off and force the fight. And Jinair's patience with their ultimates was really key. You just you know, see Jinair is, is a lot better at team fighting, and that's why some of these AOE abilities are so dangerous in the late game. You know, it does look like Jinair is going to be able to take this game now. Pilot gets grabbed with the death sentence, but that said, you know, Anarchy continues to look pretty good. Not good enough, but still pretty decent. Jinair pushed away by that threat of the teleport coming in for Ixu, but, but yeah. I think Anarchy still has uh, something special started maybe here. Well, if they can keep scrapping, they did have an early, some very nice team fighting in the early game. I like what we saw from them in lane. Yeah, this game may be over, but it's a long season. Oh, Mickey, ah, oh, gets knocked up, tries to get some damage on Sweet. Another beautiful equalizer from Trace comes in. Mickey just barely getting away. Ixu has to jump over the wall there. Song Yu un untouched but alone. And Jin Air, ah, oh, they catch Ixu with the ultimate from Chaser. There's a couple knockups. And another kill for GBM. Sweet. Was so good to catch LeBlanc right there. Yeah, what a reaction. With the pull combo and then the immediate follow up from Trace, too, with the equalizer to keep pushing forward. Jin Air has gotten miles better in terms of engaging. And uh, that was one of the issues that I saw with the Jin Air late last season was when Che was playing. Che and Chaser oh, again. Oh, they got him again. Wow. The reaction time is just amazing from Sweet Pilot gets grabbed. Doesn't really matter. He's pretty tanky. There's a wide growth just in case. Song Yun backing away, not able to do a whole lot of damage. Lyra in the middle of everything. Double kill already for Pilot, though. And Lyra gets slow, gets taken out. And Snowflower just bringing his death ever closer. Oh, manages to get back to the fountain. Hi, Ixu. Pilot taking a lot of damage from the turret here, as well as Ixu Sweet just pushing him away here. May have to give his life for that. Uses the flash. But Jin Air ready to end it as three members are out of commission for Anarchy right now. So Anarchy putting up a little bit better showing in game two, but it looks like Jin Air is going to be able to end this one. Maybe not right now, but in the near future. No, they don't want to be this low when that LeBlanc comes back up with a death yeah. cap and can actually take out someone when they have so few ab abilities available to them. So smart True. of them just to back out. There's another Dragon in 45 seconds. Go ahead, take that. Then you can just make the final push. I love the patience we're seeing Jenner play with. They're not, they understand when their timings are. They're not being overly hasty about contesting objectives because that's been one of my complaints, Stoa, is that a lot of teams I feel are overvaluing the stacks two and three on Dragon. Ah, well, oh, Pilot in a lot of trouble. Position reversal used. Wild growth onto Chaser helps a lot. A lot of damage still. Pilot is gigantic now, though. Mickey getting very, very low. Ixu as well turns around for the stun. Nobody there to land it on. And so Jin Air saves her AD carry at the last moment there. And Anarchy may have actually forced a fight out of this one. Maybe. Sweet coming in now. There's another nice equalizer. Great pulverized Ixu with a good ult. Pushes people back. But does he create enough space for his team to get away? They lose Songyun, they lose Snowflower, they're gonna lose this dragon as well. And Jinair continuing to just get that lead. Lyra not able to come in and try for that steal. And Jinair winning another fight. Mickey again looking for something, but the recall is going to come in before he's actually able to get the damage down this time. And, and Pilot's just been amazing in the last couple of matches. His positioning has been excellent. First time he's died tonight. Well, he's done a great job of being bait in the second game. You know, he's done a yes. great job of making it look like he's gotten himself yes. out of position, but then just being barely in range to be safe by his team every time. Yeah. It's an intricate dance, but <laughs> Janera is dancing it well. GBM going for uh, Lich Bane now, yeah. so just trying Makes to sense. add more punch to his build. No Void Staff yet, despite fairly good amount of magic resist on the enemy team. Yeah, I was going to say, do you think the Void Staff would have been a little bit better here? Yeah, probably. Oh, uh, well, looks like it's not going to matter. They take out Lyra without any issues at all. It's better for sieging, though, that Lich Bane, because he'll be able yeah. to chunk the towers and end the game really quickly. So I understand why point. he's doing it. Makes sense. Well, they're not going to spot that ward, but it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, they actually do. Never mind. Position reverser on to Mickey. They catch him. Can't get away. Wow. Pilot has just been so on point with these ults here. 
Ixu, nothing he can do. He's tanky, but it doesn't matter. They grab Sweep, but no one around to do damage to him. Snowfar drops that box out, and Equalizer just slowing people, allowing everyone to catch up, take down Songyun. Ixu ults people away, but he is nearly the last man standing here as Snowflower has just come back up again. But it's not going to stop Jin Air from taking down this final Nexus turret and then taking out the Nexus. Sweet just pushing Ixu away as Jin Air gets ready to end the game. I guess uh, Lyra is back as well, too, doing some damage onto Sweet and Chaser, but that is a giant rumble. That is a very dead couple members of Anarchy, and that is it, a 2-0 for Jin Air. So uh, I, I think a better performance for Jin Air than we saw against IM. Well, game one was about the same as what we saw in this series. It was only in game two when they had the Yasuo pick that things got a little wacky. And right, even then, Jin Air played out the early game well. But yeah, nothing that messy today, though. No, very, very convincing play from Jin Air. Yeah. Really good performance as <laughs> Sweet getting a little knock from his coach right there. Should have a smile after that game. Played quite well. and. Great showing from Jin Air. Now, they have played against Anarchy and Samsung, so yeah. or IM, rather. So it's not, we haven't seen enough out of them yet. I'm really excited to see them play against uh, KT on Saturday, because that's going to be their first really big match of the season. Yeah, definitely will. But either way, a win is a win, and it feels good for the Jin Air Green Wings. Starting off the season with a couple 2-0s against Incredible Miracle, and now uh, Team Anarchy. Well, that's a big thing for Jin Air because they started off last